I decided to go with chapter four and it's on Gregory of Nyssa, the reimagining of the historical narrative to help confront institutional oppression. And one thing that you should keep in mind as I um, take you through this chapter is that Gregory was one of the first abolitionist Christians who understood the existence of a, of a single slave as a violation to humanity, creation, and God. And so in the beginning, um, Gregory had a quite monogamous lifestyle. Um, he was fulfilled with prayer and many years of studying. He was then offered the position of a bishop where he was reluctant and, and excited to take the offer. So, and he did. Well, years to pass, um, there was an Iranian friction that accused the bishop of mishandling church funds, which ultimately resulted in uh, Gregory being exiled from his home. And so when that happened, Gregory decided to turn to his sister and basically go and, and to to vent and his sister turned to him and was just like you know when will you put your put it into your failures to recognize that good things which come to you are from God so basically I believe that her idea was that things happen or things that are happening are trying to put you in position at some point you were comfortable and now God has you know, had to put you in a position of uncomfort in order to allow you to um, elevate. And so when this happened, of course, Gregory is still, you know, in his um, human emotions. And he was so full of um, this p piscuous uh, cure of suffering and justice. And so Gregory was one of the earliest Christians to understand that intuitional institutional um oppression of slavery was a sin and so as he goes on um he he always came up with with the he, he had a, this slogan and so one of his slogans was as goes one slave so goes humanity creation and god and so as we go into the second uh portion of this we have to understand that slave owners was a structural element the history record records on slavery in both the ancient and modern periods suggest that slave masters did not see slaves as human beings they looked at them as childlike or incompetent or useless and wicked um they did a lot of dehumanizing uh to these slaves and and i find it very interesting that they would use the term incompetent or useless because when you think about it uh they were very helpful in, in all that they did but i guess their perspective of the way they viewed slaves were these things childlike incompetent useless and wicked um so they dehumanized the perception of slaves and con in 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 the perspective of the and, and they didn't in perspective of understanding that slaves didn't have any rights that, that they could be used and beaten in whatever the case may be um and, and it didn't matter because uh they didn't have they, they weren't allowed to voice their opinion and so in this period of time frame you got to understand that this is where a lot of things stream from. A lot of things stream from the dehumanizing uh, perception of slaves with the legal rights to perform violence against them. And and it wasn't right. And Gregory knew that. As, as things are going on, he becomes more and more furious with things and, and just annoyed and, and irritated and angry um, at the fact that things are like this. And so... He had this, this slogan that as one goes, so will the rest. And so Gregory affirms that if one human slave is a contradiction to the freedom of all humanity, then all humanity is dehumanized. Gregory goes to articulate the impossibility 
of purchasing that which is beyond price. And so in this passage, he, he, he goes to tell and, and he explains is how can we give or our price or put a price on something that, ha, that that is beyond the price? How can we put a price on on a human being that is the ruler of earth or that that is that is um, what God would one of God's you know creations how can how can it, he and then he explains how he says if we looked at the slaves if, if if the slaves were the the rulers of the earth then we now look at the earth as part of what we selling what we're selling and so he said he goes and he explains he's and he tries to depict it in his format of saying that when you sell a slave you're selling a piece of your land so what is the value of your land that you are willing to sell and for how much and if you aren't then what are we selling the slaves the slaves for are they indigenous people for um and so the slaves and indigenous people didn't have a voice for a really long time and and it shows and so here's gregory he says as goes one slave so goes the human race and as goes one slave, so goes the earth. And as goes one slave, so goes God. And when Gregory looks at the slaves in his congregation, he does not see a slave at all. He sees kings and rulers and owners of the earth. And so he can't truly wrap his head around or have the understanding of their thought process in the in the in the the process of their selling and and buying he he goes and he says why who who is this person of Christ, uh, of claiming christianity and in in christ and in holiness who is this person because it can't be the same person that is selling or buying um god's people the 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 kings and rulers of the earth it can't it can't be the same people and so then as he goes he explains in in the reimaging of the narrative in the united states as one of the institutional oppressions um it goes as one oppressed person so goes the u.s history and so christians today can speak the unthinkable by rejecting the political reality through collapsing the whole u.s american history into the experience of a single oppression and so we see that nowadays where you know what i'm saying uh there are are our situations are or are or, or, um tragedies that have gone on um with this oppression of you know people and in, in specific an african-american and we see these worldly movements it's it's not even one or two people it's it's an entire state making this movement trying to make this statement of we are here we still stand in we deserve a voice we have a voice and and, and we're going to use it and so eventually americans recognize in Gregory's period of time, they eventually recognized the personhood of black men, women, and indigenous people. But that was only recognized under the rubric of institutional oppression. And so Gregory's thinking can be extended now as as goes one black person, one indigenous person, and one aborted fetus, so goes American history. And so back in this time, because they put the stipulations of the rubric of intentional oppression, they also put it in perspective of the abortion. They make it to where if the fetus is, is not necessarily be considered a person. And so would it not necessarily being considered a person, they now have put in a perspective of saying that basically um, we can eliminate this. This is something that is eliminated. And so so when we sit here and think, we're like, what who 
who are the people who make these decisions on who deserves to live and who deserves to die who deserves a voice and who doesn't deserve a voice who has the right to allow things to happen and who doesn't who 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 are these people that are making these rules that claim that they are christians and why why is it okay that they can claim and make these stipulations and situations in place that are now considered laws and it'd be okay and so and 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 when you think about it in today's term we had a male um put a law down for a female um for a fee for for something that only a female can can provide and so we, we're talking about abortion. We're in, in this perspective. We have a male who can't even produce a baby, but he's the one that makes the decision for what a woman can and can't do with her body. And so, where, where is that fair? How is that fair? And so, to conclude this presentation. Ultimately, um, when the ancient world looked at a slave, all they saw was an object of violence, a submissive body, a body marked with scars and, and in tattoos. And so Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nyssa looked and he and he said, I don't see what you guys see. I see rulers of earth. And so. In the end, who who can we truly, you know, who who who, how how is it okay that the power is decided for who does and who does not constitute a political person has historically rested with the white or the land owner, the land owning men, like why why is that still something that is significant to this day? And so today's Christians face a similar problem and opportunity to either minimize or deny the institutional suppression.